Hey guys, this is Dan Wolwacker, Coal Cracker Bushcraft. Today what I'm going to be working on is a trapper style debris shelter. And if you ever look back at old photos um, about the trapping era and the mountain men, you'll see a lean-to type shelter made out of debris that you can fit numerous men in um, for sleeping and also to do work during rain. So I found a location and I want to talk a little bit about that and then do a little bit of footage of frame construction and then it's pretty straightforward from there how to build the shelter itself. And like I said, um, it's a debris shelter, so it's gonna take some maintenance, but that's understood if you're in a longer term type environment. So how did I pick this? Well, number one, we wanna look for location. We want something flat, which this area um, is a slight incline, but this is the flattest I found. It rained pretty heavy not too long ago, so you're looking to make sure no water's running through your camp. And you're also making sure that there's water and food sources around your camp. So I know not too far from here, there's a pond and some um, streams that inlet into that pond. So I'm good with that. It's not too far of a trek for that. The next thing that I wanted to look for in building this style shelter was wind direction because I have a huge opening behind me, open fields, that I know the wind just barrels through here real hard. So that's going to dictate a lot of how I want to set the shelter up. So the way I'm facing now is going to be the open part of my shelter and I'm going to allow the wind to hit the back to, as a block. So I'm in there, it was gonna help control my body's core temperature. In front then I'm gonna dig a big, long, a big pit um, with a reflector to uh, make my fire so that heat will reflect back in. And setting it up this way, having my shelter set up um, that it's blocking the wind with the fire out in front with the reflector, you're gonna get some draft to come in the sides just because the wind comes in so hard. So when that blows in, that's gonna only push that heat back into the shelter. So that's a, also a good thing. Um, you also wanna look for um, widow makers. You don't want to make sure there's no huge trees above you that are dead standing that may fall. If there was, you either have to take them down or um, set up a different location for camp. So I took all those factors into consideration when building this and um, this was the best site um, that I felt at this time to have. So what type of equipment's here? Well, there's two men, myself and my friend Dan Van Linsky, for this project. Um, we have a small hatchet that he carried in um, and then I brought in a full-size felling axe. I also have a trapper's um, mallet that I used to pound in stakes, so I would have that along with me, and then a buck saw for cutting up some of the wood. So with those simple tools, we should have no problem whatsoever to get the materials together. The only other thing that if you were um, bringing, bringing larger type tools in, maybe, in, uh, in my opinion, a rake, for the simple fact you can rake things out of the way, and um, gathering material, if you're gonna use leaf and debris from the ground, it's a lot easier to rake it up than try to scrape it up with your foot or make a rake or anything like that. And even if you would just carry the bottom of the rake, you can always put a stick on that and lash it on and you're good to go. So I'm gonna start getting some stuff set up. We're gonna run some footage, talk you through it. Also just let some footage run so you can see how it's working out. And then by the end of the day, we'll have a good sustainable shelter that we'll be able to live out of for the um, medium term type survival or medium term trapping type trip. So stay tuned and we're gonna get started on the shelter. These are the Y stakes. So basically what I'm gonna be doing here is putting up the first two are gonna be Y's, um, Y branches. And I'm actually gonna bury these down into the ground. Now you can of course, if you had two trees, you know, use them. But this is a little bit experimental in a sense that um, we wanna make a freestanding shelter. So I cut two Y branches, they're about six feet in length. So the top of our shelter is gonna be around four feet because I'm intending to bury them about two feet deep, pack dirt around and pack some stone to give two stable um, uprights. So they're cut. So my next thing was I took a piece of green wood, made a point on the end and I started working to get this down to make myself a hole because it is tough to just take a branch and stick it two feet down into the ground. So what I did was um, a little tip for measuring in woods. I know this is a 24 inch saw blade. So I just took from my tip up, put a little score mark. I know we're 24 inches. So I'm just working this in, get it in, work it a little bit. And you can see I'm getting a little close. Hammer it in a few times, work it, pull it out. Work the sides a little bit. And again, you're not, we're not digging dirt out, so it's gonna take a little bit longer of a process but this is gonna be more of a sustainable type shelter. So I'm, I'm getting close. I'm only about four inches away from my desired depth. Now my Y branches, I cut at the same um, length. 
So I know if both my holes are the same, you know, I'll be real close to being even for my front cross beam. So I'm going to continue with this one, continue with the second hole, and then we'll go from there with the um, initial structure. Once this initial structure's up, then it's just piling debris on and getting the back branches set up and things like that real easy. So I'm putting a little bit more time and energy into this. Um, this isn't something, this shelter, that you're going to want to build if you get caught out overnight because it's going to take most of the day to do this. But again, this is a type of shelter that if you were planning to live out here for a little bit more extended amount of time, that you say, hey, I'm going to put some time and energy into this. So you can see how the structure is coming along. When you do this, you don't want to have huge, huge um, logs or lumber because if this would break for some reason, you don't want this stuff hitting you. This is going to hurt enough, but it's not going to seriously injure you. Um, now, if this was a survival type shelter that we were worried more about just keeping warm, we're not going to have a fire or anything like that, we'd want this, of course, lower to trap more heat and let our body heat radiate inside. But like I said, this is more for two or three guys to be able to come into a nice work area and room for our gear. So we didn't want it that we'd crouch down. Um, you can see, I mean, I'm six, six foot two, so this is a, maybe 5'10", and this is gonna slant backwards right now. So we put our two side um, Ys in, and our cross beam. Now we're gonna actually start to build the back section, and we're gonna kick that back probably about five and a half feet, um, start layering all our boards on, and then we're gonna build a nice big trench here for a long fire. Uh, my buddy Dan found some nice big flat rocks um, not too far from here, so we're gonna figure out a way to get them here and build a nice reflector to get that heat kick back into us. So keep on going here and um, show you progress as we go along. So we're just gathering dead wood now, stacking it along here, and this is gonna be the initial structure. Now there's a few things. We're just keeping an eye on our uprights to make sure that the weight of this isn't gonna knock them forward or break them. So this had to be good strong green wood, which we did get, and we have them around two feet into the ground. So we just want to watch that. Now, what to do if that starts to lean? Well, you can always take another Y and you can put it this way, staked out, because that'll hold the weight forward, okay? Second option is you can take some rope, you can tie it back and um, tighten it up to keep tension back. So either way would work if you were building this and you felt it wasn't gonna hold up. Right now, we're doing good. We don't have any sway or anything, plus, what we're going to do is once we start to get down into a fire pit and we're going to dig that down for a long fire, we can use some of that dirt to reinforce this to actually build that mound up on each side, which is going to only strengthen the shelter itself. So it's coming along pretty quick. Um, so far, we have maybe an hour into this project. That was it. Um, the longest was actually getting the holes down in the ground and getting them set. Now we're just going around, we're cutting um, wood to length or if there's wood that we can break, we're just breaking it to length, piling it on here. I have a little bit extra sticking out over the top of this, just for the simple fact that um, once we start to pile debris on, it'll give us a little bit of an awning, not much, but you see there's gonna be a lot of good room in the back of this. So we'll just keep at it. Once this is all filled in, we'll start adding our back layers of debris and we'll go through that process. What I'm doing now is I'm starting to put some layers on. I have the initial framework done so I'm just taking some of the treetops that I initially cut from the live green trees to make our frame and I'm starting to layer them on because I'm going to put some leaf debris matter on here shortly. But what I want to do is I want to get something for that to grab onto so it's not just that it's falling through. So this is giving me a good base. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can actually weave this through if you'd want to, but this is going to be the quickest way to get this done. So you just don't want any huge bumps or knuckles in here because that's just gonna make it a little bit tougher to get your material in there. So as the leaf material starts to lay on here, or if I do have any sections that are a little bit higher, we just wanna get a little bit of weight on that. So I can just find some more deadfall and just lay that on top here. And um, the leaf matter, of course, you're gonna want it pretty thick to the point that when I'm inside, I see no light coming through. So once I do that, I'm gonna um, start to work on the sides. So initially we'll get this back done and then this shelter, for the most part, would be good to go but I want to close them sides and so we'll work on that then later on. But for now, this shelter, once this gets packed with leaves, will be good. When you're packing with debris, you want to start at the bottom and work your way up to the top because if you start at the top, 
of course it's just going to keep falling down and you want a layering effect so as them leaves do trickle down it's almost like shingles when the rain would hit it's going to run over the top or if you build it the other way it's going to catch it okay so i'm going to just continue to work with this stick branches in here as needed to weigh it down if needed and um, start to pack on some leaves okay so we're continuing to fill leaves and branches on the back side of the shelter but as you can see the shelter's coming along this bottom section down in here if you look at all different angles you can't see any light through it so that's a good thing so you definitely want to have at least a foot to three foot which is optimal in my opinion at least three foot um, of debris on the back side of this now there is some space here because the way the branches lay so that can all get filled in um, with different materials probably what we're going to do is not too far from here we have a real swampy area with a lot of um, real high weeds we're going to cut them off and then we're going to weave them in here just to give it some more insulation from the inside it's not going to hurt anything at all we can not do that and we would be fine but over the long term that's going to help it insulate more we're just putting more debris between us and the wind and the elements on the other side i did add a center post here because our cross beam was starting to sag a little bit just from the weight so that wasn't a problem whatsoever i just stuck it in there and it was good to go out front i started digging out a long um, pit for a fire and we're going to put like i said a stone reflector out there to reflect that heat back in depth wise um, normally with a lean-to you want to take a one full step so like a yard three feet out from your shelter uh, but now that I'm in here and I'm looking at it we might have to move this in a little bit closer the fire pit so I might dig in a little bit more just so it's a little bit closer to kick that heat back in um, but we'll see a long fire is a little bit different than just a little campfire uh, coming out pretty good it's not taking too much time I'm just really taking our time stopped had lunch hiking around, sitting around a little bit, and getting this done. So definitely doable in one day, something like this. And this is a bigger shelter. If it was one person, you, you don't need something this big at all. And if you're just trying to do something more on the lines of one or two days, if you didn't have anything else, you can definitely lower this. I would have this about this low and in a little bit tighter, enough just that I can squeeze in there and I'm good. Um, this is big enough to put a raised bed or anything like that, which maybe we'll do in the future. But for now, it's coming along pretty well. So uh, I'll keep going, and once it's all finished up, give you a quick 360 um, view of it, and we should be good to go for tonight. So this is the finished shelter. We put a half wall on this side just to block some wind, but overall, it came out pretty good. About um, three quarters of a day's work here, so we have more than enough time. We stopped for lunch. Like I said, we took our time doing this. So we definitely had more than enough um, daylight hours here uh, doing this no doubt we didn't start first thing in the morning either so definitely doable to put a shelter like this up within one day um, put we found an old um, deer skull here while we were getting some of the debris matter together so we thought hey we're gonna throw that up we dug our fire pit out we just didn't put any stone in there yet so we are gonna put a reflector in there in the near future we're gonna call it a day for today because we have our shelter up and we're good to go. We're going to get a good fire going and just relax for a little bit. Um, do a quick 360 view. But this was Dan Wolak at Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Thanks for joining on this video. Stay tuned for more, guys.